Today, I'm starting a brand new series where we're going around the world to find the best players in Clash Mini. The reason why I love Supercell's games so much is that they can unite the world, you know, despite the language barrier, despite communication barriers. Two people that had never knew each other could still, you know, play a game of Clash Royale, play a game of Brawl Stars and have fun. Today we're going to be discovering the talents around the world, how they play and how they see Clash Mini in their country. Today we're going to be taking a look at Japan, an amazing player called Paru-chan. Paru-chan, I think, I think that's how you pronounce it. So let's jump into battle. So at the time of this recording, Paru-chan was around top 50 in the world. And I asked him, in Japan, is Clash Mini known? Is it popular? He told me since the game isn't available yet in Japan, not many people know it, but the small community is there and uh yeah he discovered clash mini through the uh clash of clans youtube channel where they presented three games i think it was clash quests clash heroes and clash mini and this one stood out the most and so basically one of his favorite heroes as you guys can see in the screen is the monk he it's it's one of his favorite his one of his favorite mini is the miner and today we're going to be looking at how he plays this deck. I really, to discover play styles from around the world really is a unique uh, opportunity that I have. And I was able to get in contact with him. So, you know, a really, really awesome guy. And uh, I'll link below, uh, down below his YouTube channel so you guys can check out his amazing, uh, amazing uh, content. So right now we're going up against the classic Wave Masters. He has the mini P.E.K.K.A. in this deck, which is really, really uh, strong, especially because, especially because he can dissipate the Wave Master. He can dissipate the um, Bandits. Right now, unfortunately, we're not going to get round number two. But this deck really, really is a solid, uh, solid option against the Wave Master. We're going to see it in this match round number three is about to start we're not going to play the battle healer because we don't want to give some chain dashes to the uh, bandits so he's going to go for unstoppable on the healing ranger and that's good the, his the way he positioned that healing ranger is not going to allow the bandit to chain dash because she's either going to dash to the monk or to the healing ranger and not both so this is why you know Every mini in this deck has their... Oh, never mind, actually. He, ben is going to dash onto both, which is really, really unfortunate. Um, and right now, the Monk, is he going to... He's going to get an ultimate onto the Wave Master. And as you guys can see right now, the Monk is going to be able to take care of business. And despite the first chain dash on the, you know, on the Healing Ranger and the Monk, he managed to pick up round number three. A very, very important round. In this match because right now our opponent did reveal most of his deck and it's going to be up to us to adjust to what the opponent is cooking are we going to max out our mini P.E.K.K.A because it seems like it's one of the our the most important mini in this deck so he's going to go maybe for ice block protect that mini P.E.K.K.A from the Prince which is going to charge come charging down and Bandit is going to dash onto healing, onto the Monk, and onto the Healing Ranger. That's really, really unfortunate. But the Monk's going to get one ultimate ability onto the Giant Skeleton. He should die to the Giant Skeleton. Wait, there's still a couple of health. He's still... Ah, no, it's not going to be enough. The Bandit absolutely just bullying the uh, IR Monk. And it's not going to be enough to get the clean... To get the victory in round number four. Now, round number five is definitely where everything is going to be played. He's going to go for a Magic Archer top left. Now that is... In okay, never mind. I thought... Uh, <laughs> he bamboozled me. Oh, never mind. Actually, never mind. Why is he doing that? Because I think he wants to attract... He wants to attract the bandit. So, first, first off, we can see that these players are cooking with some different different strategies and the healing ranger not going to be uh the band is not going to dash onto the healing ranger 
and that's going to allow the healing ranger to get those unstoppable abilities soon look at that beautiful healing and that's going to keep everybody alive and most importantly everybody immune from stun that is going to allow the monk to clean up the whole board and he should be able to get the victory here. It's going to be close, but the Wave Master shouldn't. Ooh, the Healing Ranger MVP right there. And we're gonna see Paru Chan take game number one. All right, so now we're going to be jumping in another game against the Grand Warden, another, um, another top tier hero in this meta, especially when you combine him with the Magic Archer. Grand Warden really came back into the meta well, I mean, he was always really there, but people really understood how to play the Grand Warden when the Wave Master Bandit, you know, meta kind of just took us by surprise. And with this deck, basically, you're not going to give any energy to the Bandit because everything on the board, including the Grand Warden, don't doesn't have a super. So round number two is about to start. Our opponent is playing a Grand Warden on the Clone Tower, which means everybody's going to get... 20 shield so a very very difficult situation i'm very i'm looking forward to see how he's going to do how he's going to handle this matchup so it seems like it seems like the battle healer is going to be the play the so healing ranger battle healer or yeah he is going to do that an interesting play uh, which I mean the right now the whole strategy is just going to be to oh to spam Healing on the board and let the monk slowly one tap into the whole board and that is exactly what is going to happen here power Chan Is going to be taken around number two and I think that's going to be a very very important strategy Win this monk deck the battle healer is going to be coming in really really clutch keeping everybody alive and most importantly keeping the monk alive that is the name of the game in this deck uh as the monk you know he can one tap anybody on the board so right now we are going to go for unstoppable to deny Ooh, double prince is going to be dropped it's going to do a lot of damage it's going to do a lot of are we going to get some healing Ooh, we are but right now yeah it's not going to be enough the double prince kind of caught us off guard obamka is going to take Round number three with the Mirrored Prince. But now we know that he has Mirrored Prince and we can uh, definitely try and do something. So a uh, Ice Wizard is going to come in and protect the cloned battle healer. We wanna make sure we keep both of them alive as they're gonna keep cycling, super cycling healing. And well, basically nothing is going to be able to, to break through that much healing. He's gonna go for the double. Ice Wizard and Mini Pekka to soak up both of the Prince's charge. So a really, really beautiful play by Paruchan, which is going to just soak up that. And ooh, the two battle healers are healing each other, keeping everybody alive. And look at that. The battle healers went from zero, from barely, barely enough HP to survive to maxed out. Those double battle healers are just insanely powerful and amazing to deal with. And right now the monk is lost, my brother. Where are you going? We're gonna take round number four and game number two. Going up against the shield main and now in this matchup, I think what's probably one of the most hilarious interactions in the game is when the monk uses his ultimate ability on the shield maiden. Uh, and the shield maiden has her super activated. The monk is going to kill himself but the shield main is going to be staying alive. So I don't know if that's going to be the case here. No, the monk is going to get an early super. Where basically the monk is going to super onto the shield maiden. And the shield maiden is going to ref uh, take 66% of the damage. And the monk is going to get the full 100 uh, damage. So I don't know if we're going to see that interaction happen. So mini P.E.K.K.A. dissipate. In front of the shield minion, we really want to make sure our monk stays alive and starts taking out these troops one by one. Battle is going to be placed one tile in the front. So notice how Power Chan playing this really, really slow. He wants to make sure everybody is, you know, all the way at the back. Ooh, Healing Ranger is not going to get an ultimate ability. That's really unfortunate. Will the monk get the ultimate ability? He is. 
There's still an Ice Wizard on the board and the Shield Maiden could reflect the super, but the mini packet dissipates the Shield Maiden before she pops her ultimate ability. Really, really uh, beautiful mini P.E.K.K.A. is going to go for a two round lead. Now this is probably the f round three, round four. These are going to be rounds where we're not going to, uh, we're not, we're gonna be waiting. We're not gonna commit to anything brand new. Maybe upgrade one or two troops, but that's going to be it because the, the, the elixir, uh, our opponent has, uh, well, I think it's like six elixir, uh, six elixir advantage. So it's going to be difficult to clean sweep, especially when you're on top ladder like Parukshan. And the miner is going to be dissipating. What a beautiful miner. You might think, why would you place the miner in the silence uh, column of the monk? Well, it's because uh, the monk, the miner is not going to jump and the miner is going to start dissipating the monk, but it ends up backfiring. So what seemed to be a good play for the opponent ended up just not working out. And that is going to be game number three, Paruchan. Absolutely beautiful. So there we have it, fellas. Paruchan, a very, very amazing player from Japan, which has shown us all of his talents with this beautiful monk deck. So make sure you guys give it a try at home. And I hope you guys enjoyed this series where we're gonna be discovering players from all around the world. And let me know down below which country I should do next in this series. Thank you so much guys for watching till the end and I'll see you in another video. Later fellas.